Okay, so we're graphing rationals here today. Uh, the vertex form of this is y equals uh, a over x minus h plus k. So it's back to kind of what we did first semester. And the parent function is y equals 1 over x. That's our general form equation. It's fractions that we've been dealing with. And then, so let's go through what each thing means. A is our leading, if I can get this, it's our leading coefficient. If the absolute value of A is greater than 1, the graph stretches. And if it's between 0 and 1, it compresses. So just like before, nothing different. Um, if the A is less than 0, the graph reflects, and instead of it reflecting across the x-axis, it reflects across the asymptote. So that's the big difference. It reflects across the asymptote. And we'll get to that here in a second. So the H value always is the opposite sign of the inside value. So just remember x is lie. The h value is connected to the x. The k value is our ending constant just like before. And now instead of finding the vertex we're finding the intersection of the asymptotes which is h and k. So the h value this identifies the Huh. This identifies the horizontal shift or actually, excuse me, it identifies the vertical asymptote. Let me step back from that. So this is where it's different. It identifies the vertical asymptote and it's still shifting left and right but that line is up and down where x equals h. And the k value identifies the horizontal asymptote. So this is still talking about shifting up and down, but that line is moving left and right. So it's the horizontal asymptote as y is equal to k. And so when we look at our domain, it's the set of all x's such that x cannot be equal to h, so it can't equal that asymptote. The range is the set of all y's such that y cannot be equal to x, to k, excuse me. And then our asymptotes are at x equals h and y equals k. So that's taken into account h and k. Um, even though H moves things left and right, it's a vertical asymptote. K moves things up and down. That asymptote is actually a horizontal asymptote. To graph the parent function, you must create a table that includes positive and negative x values. So when we have y is equal to 1 over x, we want to do something like negative 2, negative 1, uh, 1 half, uh, 1, and 2. And so when we do that, we get negative 1 over 2, negative 1, and you have 1 over 1 half, and that is equal to 2, because we, when you divide a fraction, you flip it and multiply it, 1 over 1, and then 1 over 2. Asymptote shift. So remember, opposite. So when it's moving left, it's plus, right is minus. So this is asymptote shift left and right. This is asymptote shift up and down. Plus stays the same minus stays down. So same as before. When we have a an a value, so here we have an a value of 6. We still do the same thing like we did up here. So if we just have x is 1 half, uh, 2, and 4, we plug those in. 1 divided by 1 half equals 2. We multiply it by 6 and we get 12. When we have 2, it's 1 over 2 times 
6, which equals 3. So that'll be our new y value. And then we have 4, it becomes 1 over 4 times 6, which equals 1 and a half. So just kind of shows you it's multiplying the um, parent function by the a value of 6. Okay, so when we get, when we look at our transformations, so when it's plus 3 here, we say left 3. And so this is where the asymptote would be at plus 3. And still here. And so the graph is going to be something like this and like this. When the plus 3 is on the outside, that means it shifts up 3. Like that. So that means the graph is going to look like this and like this. There's always two asymptotes. So this one's up 3. I always have two asymptotes. They start at on the x-axis and the y-axis and they move based on your shifts. Okay, so now let's flip the page over. And give me a second to get to the second page. Okay, here we go. Mark it up. Okay, so the first example you can see is y equals 1 over x plus 2. And so we want to list our transformations and it'd just be that plus 2. So that's shift up 2 units. Okay, so that's our transformations. And then we want to create a table. We have y equals 1 over x plus 2. And so when we shift up to, that means we have to shift up this asymptote here. The other asymptote doesn't shift, so it stays along the y-axis. Going back to then, when we're creating a table, we want to pick points that are on either side of the asymptote. So I want to pick x values like negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half. I don't want to pick and then 1 half, 1, and 2. I don't want to pick values that match up to the asymptote. That's key. Don't pick a value matching up to the asymptote. So when I put this in, I get negative 1 over 2 plus 2. And so negative 1 half plus 2 is just going to be 1 and 1 half. So at negative 2, I'm at 1 and 1 half. If I can put it in here. So it's going to be about right there. At negative 1, I have 1 over negative 1 plus 2. So negative 1 plus 2 is at 1. So at negative 1, I'm at 1. And then at negative 1 half, so 1 divided by negative 1 half, that is then plus 2 is equal to negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. So at negative 1 half, I am at 0. And so then I can just draw it in as best as you can. And then on the other hand, 1 divided by 1 half plus 2 is going to be equal to 4. 2 plus 2. So I'm right there. I'm going to do 1. 1 over 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And then when I do 2, 1 over 2 plus 2 is equal to 2 and 1 half. All right there. So this graph on this side is going to look like that. So you can see the two sides look the same here and here. They look the same, just reflected. All right, now when we're listing our domain, so domain is the set of all x's such that x cannot be the vertex, or uh, sorry, the, not the asymptote, 
and that's at x equals 0. And then range the same way. The set of all y such that y cannot be 2. So you can kind of see this is the y equals 2, and this one is the x equals 0 line. And they can't equal that. All right, I'm going to leave the other two for you to do since I'm running out of time. But thank you for listening, and please check back again later if you have questions.